Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Boston, the BECC, where the Cube got started in May of 2020. 2020 sorry, 2010. Wow, that went by fast. We're here at IBM Think 2024. Really excited. A couple of Cube alums and good friends of the Cube. Rinika Gunner. Gunner is the GM of product management for data and AI at IBM. And Sanjeev Mohan is with Sanjmo. He's a principal, former Gartner analyst, member of the Cube Collective, and a good friend of the Cube. Guys, thanks so much for spending some time here. Great keynote today. Thank you. Super energetic, a lot of announcements. How'd it feel? What, what should we know from that keynote? Look, I think it feels fantastic. The momentum is there with Watson X. You heard a lot of the announcements across what we're doing on our Watson X platform, across what we're doing on the AI side, data, governance. We are moving with speed, and this is just the beginning. We're fantastically excited about our journey. Bunch of new announcements, the new AI developer toolkit. Um, you, you talked a little bit about Watson data for open table formats. Maybe we come back to that, the semantic layer. Uh, new Presto C++ query optimizer. IBM uh, data product hub, which a is new a product preview. Watson X governance integration with SageMaker. SageMaker is painful, and so you're making it less painful. My words. Um, take us through some of those announcements. What are you most excited about? Well, on the AI side, we really are excited about really um, making enterprise generative AI scalable for the builder. And so we announced our Flows Engine sort of set of capabilities that really helps the developer be able to create um, new AI applications seamlessly and easily with enterprise capabilities like observability, like um, you know, model accuracy, et cetera. And I think this is really important because generative AI really unpacks the ability for not just the data scientist, but the rest of the business. And it really is about making every developer an AI developer. And so with what we're doing on the side for, for our AI builders, that was incredibly important to us. Next on the data side, we're going to talk a lot about what we're doing with um, Watson X data and the announcements that we had with our Presto C++ um, query engine, which we believe is very price performance. So for the same query performance that you have, you can have 60% of the cost. And we believe that is really important, especially as data is so essential to be able to have good artificial intelligence. We talked about Milvis for our vector database support with Watson X data as well. And finally, on the governance side, doesn't matter where your models are, we will help you govern them. And we demonstrated that we're able to do that really well within SageMaker, Amazon SageMaker, and it's something that we're working a lot with our clients to be able to accelerate with um, workloads that may exist on Amazon or anywhere else. Like, thank you for that rundown, a lot going on. Sanjeev, you've been here all week. Yep. What's your analysis of not, not only the event, but specifically the areas that Ritika just talked about? So I feel this is the most energetic I have ever seen from IBM. IBM is laser focused on being, you know, what you call super cloud, being that infrastructure layer, and it has adopted cross cloud, hybrid. Hybrid is a very, very important piece. The other beautiful thing I like what IBM is doing, IBM has come to a realization that it already owns, it has that breadth and depth of products. I'll give you an example. There is a product uh, in data security that we are, we've known for years called Guardium. Now they're saying, well, yep. we have Guardium, let's uh, modernize Guardium for AI models mm -hmm. so we can discover vulnerabilities, discover what models are being used and the usage. And then, what? so the whole ethos of IBM now is use what you have have a, a wide uh, spectrum of uh, hardware to run it on and enable, infuse AI across that entire end-to-end. -end. The goal is to make consumption frictionless. That is where IBM is going. And, and I think the story is coming together. Two years ago, I think 2022, IBM came to a realization that people are not just going to gravitate to IBM Cloud. So they struck a partnership with AWS. That's right. And now I see Watson X dot data, which is a lake house, is actually adopting, putting object files on S3 in uh, Parquet format. Iceberg is now the table format. That's right. 
And then there is the optimized query engine that you announced today, Presto C++. That's right. Which is Presto, so it's open. And then behind the scenes, there's, there's Milvers, like you said, a vector database. All open, anyone can use it. It's not limited to a particular cloud. So I, I just find... You just yeah. described that stack slide. He did, right? yeah. he did exactly. a great job. Yeah. I was like, I don't even need to speak anymore. Yeah, he, he did, did a the fantastic job. I should have done the keynote. Yeah. 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 All right, and then, and then, and then Watson X for data fits right in there. It, market's moving so fast. Um, in just the past year, from 2023 to today, tick off the things that you've, you, the innovations, you know, what are the high level innovations in the past 12 months, just to give our audience a sense. Well, I think one of the major ones we announced at the show this week was that we open sourced our large language models. Right. And this for us is like foundational because now everybody has access to our English and code models. And we believe that we have the best code models out there when we do performance benchmarking on those code models, we actually fare better than even a lot of the open source large language code models that are out there. And we usually, we, we, we do that at, um, we punch kind of twice our weight. And what that means is where others may need a seven billion parameter model, we can do that in three. Um, and that effectively for the user means you get better performance at better cost for the better outcomes. And for us, that's a really big thing. And what we're using is a foundation for all of the AI that exists in our generative AI portfolio, like our Watson code assistance. Um, it also means like, I think you heard Arvind on Monday or Tuesday talk about in Struck Lab. We now have the ability to be able to uh, use the community to be able to make not only our own models better, but then to start to help other clients in, in the market be able to build their own domain specific models on top of that. So for us, that was one big area in what we're doing. And you can see a lot of the applications that now we're starting to use with that generative AI technology, whether it be something like, um, whether it be something like Assistant for Z, where we're now bringing and democratizing the skills that are necessary to really understand the mainframe or Z, whether that be in what we're doing in all of our code assistance where we announced um, WCA for Java this week. So there's so many things on the AI side, of course on the data side that we just spoke about and on the governance side that we think are really fantastic. Can I ask you a question about uh, vector database? We were talking off camera about you know the choice of Milvis. We use Milvis in the Cube AI, you know, love it. Uh, but Sanjeev, you and I have been talking about this for a while. Yeah. You know, is, is a, a, a vector database a feature of a main database or is it, mm. you know, a market in and of itself? A lot of people have that discussion. We haven't moved off we have, of, of Milvish yet, even though we could, you know, merge it with Mongo. Yeah. You know, it, it takes some work. What are you seeing in the marketplace? Room for both? Vector database is a capability. It's a feature. A, a vector database, all it's, uh, it's saying is that we're going to take the source data and turn it uh, and store the embeddings. Embeddings is just an array of floating point numbers. How hard it is to store that in a column of a particular data type, which is array. So, uh, so it's not supposed to be a separate database. It, uh, uh, you take any database in the world, they all now support vectors, vector embeddings. So. It, Embeddings yeah. have been there kind of like from time. It's just how you represent that within the database. Correct. Right? So, so that's what's important. Yeah, that's what's yeah. important. And so we, we do have Milvis if that's what you really want to be able to have, but people can represent those embeddings in any way that they need to. And we're also seeing alternative techniques to even using vector embeddings yeah. um, going forward as well. Like we, we really believe of you can actually do something in a vector database if you need to, um, if you want to be able to use your data and kind of start and, and start even customizing your models, you can do that using Instruct Lab techniques as well. So we're going to see a variety of techniques in addition to vector database, embeddings, what you have with kind of fine tuning rag, and yeah, rag patterns. Correct. All of that is, it, like there are multiple choices yeah. in the market today. Well, choice is the operative yeah. word there. So. You know, one thing I want to say about the, uh, the granite models. Uh, so there are 18 granite models uh, in a family of granite, very purpose built. Uh, IBM does not want to be this generic general purpose model. So it's a race to the bottom because they're on uh, hugging face, they're already over 600,000 models today. So what they're saying is that who are our customers, mainframe customers, what do they have COBOL? So we are going to do a COBOL to Java. We're not going to do like 
Python to Rust or anything because that's anyone can, others can do it. So after they do that, then they're saying, okay, maybe next one, maybe PL1. So you see, so they're being very intentional in in their offerings now. That's so. right. Guys, we got to wrap, but I'll, I'll ask you each your question. I'll start with Sanjeev and then Ritika. You, you can chime in and, and close us. Let's assume we're at Think 2025. Mm. Yeah. What do you want to see, Sanjeev, um, that you can't say is here today? What would you like to see a year from now? IBM has made huge bets on quantum. And in fact, they're building stuff for quantum, which may take a year or maybe five years. So I want to see what is that intersection of quantum with the way we do data today. Right. That's interesting. I didn't think you were going to go there. How about you, Ritika? What do you want to be I able think to the say world, in 2025? I think the world is moving today? so fast. It's not even 2025, but I think um, agentic generative AI is really um, going to be here. It already is here in some senses, but I mean, at scale, I think is what we're going to see in 2025. I also think operationalization of generative AI to be able to scale that in the enterprise. I talked a little bit about that today in the keynote, but I think we're going to see this start to um, really accelerate exponentially. And that ties into what I want to see in 2025, which is really tangible ROI to the extent that's throwing off enough value that this becomes self-funding. That's Because right. it's really not today, but at scale, it will be. And then, of course, we can worry about the next new shiny toy, which is quantum coming together with AI. Sanjeev, Ritika, great to see you Thank guys. You so Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Coming inside the cube. We're here at IBM Think 2024. This is Dave Vellante. Keep it right there. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>